at Christmas time, I was so mad. I couldn't go to church. I couldn't sing. Um, I tried to go to confession. I was just so ticked off. God, take him. Mm-hmm. Um, but there was, um, oh, there's other times like when something happened on the farm. Like, okay, why aren't you here to deal with this? Why am I doing this, not you? I was going to ask you how your background as an EMT and having that sort of medical training, and I'm sure you have, um, if not single-handedly, at least played a part in saving other people, how it feels to think, you know, I could save everybody else, but I couldn't save my husband. I had to go to counseling. Actually, they told me I had post, um, uh, stress, post-traumatic stress, stress disorder. disorder. Yeah, because of that. It's got to be traumatic. It was. I couldn't understand why I couldn't say yeah. I knew mm-hmm. how to do things. Well, and then I think, why didn't I catch it earlier? Why didn't, you know, why didn't, when it came in, I didn't notice it. And I really didn't. Right. I mean, he just seemed, he just told me he was tired. Right. And then I felt, well, did I, was I so concentrating on my thesis that I caught, I didn't, right. I made something. But then the pathologist, when they called me, they asked me all these questions, and it's like, well, did he, did he have swollen legs? Well, yeah, it was summertime. He worked on concrete all day long. You know, did he complain about his legs hurt? My 30-year-old, who was on the tractor, was complaining about his legs hurt. He probably hurt all the time. You know, the bouncing in the tractor and everything. Um, was he coughing? Well, yeah, we were hay. <laughs> All of us were coughing. Right. Um, you know, it just those things that <laughs> now that I look and then, and, you know, realizing and doing research about his condition afterwards, um, I realized that those were all everyday things that, right. and nobody would have caught it. Have you made peace with your guilt? Do you still have moments where you feel guilty? Um, I've made peace after some counseling and knowing, as long as I know now that my boy, it wasn't something hereditary or that the boys would be, or that my daughter. Um, I was really concerned that there was things right. with the enlarged heart. Right. And they told me that it was six months to two years prior to his death, he had gotten an, an infection. Mm-hmm. Uh, bronchitis, he could have had um, a toothache, something that it went into his heart, and that just enlarged the heart. And something specific just to him. Yeah, it's nothing, it's not something the kids will ever catch, so. Can I ask, did you go to group counseling? Was it one-on-one counseling? One-on-one. I took a one-on-one counseling. At what point did you feel, okay, I need to seek professional help? About uh, a year. Okay. Uh, At one point, I just couldn't stop crying. And it was just about coming up on the first anniversary. And are are you still in counseling? No. How um, how long did you have to take, did you have to be involved in counseling? About a year. Okay. About a year. Um, just there was a lot of things all of a sudden happening that second year. And I think that first year you're you're so numb, and there's so much that was coming at me, yeah. thesis and back to school and, and and you know trying to get everything with the farm and and that, that all of a sudden it hit me. But what role did your faith play? Oh, I don't, couldn't have made it without, mm-hmm. other than the fact that at Christmas, Christmas was bad. Yeah. But groceries, divine mercy, um, I set them up, and I still do. Mm-hmm. Um, light a candle, have mass and stuff. Um, yeah, they're, it's very close to me.